Hello, this is Brian Germain. I have some thoughts uh, about closing sequence that you might want to hear. Some of you may have heard this discussion before. Maybe you read an article in Parachutist Magazine. However, I think it's, it's a good idea to just take a few minutes and explain why it is that several of the manufacturers, and I believe most of the manufacturers, if not all, will be recommending a new closure sequence. We've had a few malfunctions over the years the, that involved a pilot chute and toe where the closing pin locked up on the bridle. And the first time I saw it was in Sweden. I was at uh, Skydiv Stockholm, they call it Gritjom, and the head of uh, safety for the Swedish Parachute Association had a mal. And you go, okay, people have mouths. But this was odd, you know, that the, the closing pin actually poked through the bridle, locking it up causing it a pilot shoot and tow, and of course he landed with the main, you know, still uh, still in there. There's no way for it to come out at all. So we thought, that was really, really weird. It's not going to happen again. Well, it did happen again on his next jump. So I thought, okay, that was weird. It must have just been the hole that was already created in the bridle. Not going to happen again, right? Well, then it happened again to somebody else, and then it happened again to somebody else. And uh, finally, after uh, quite a few instances. Uh, one of them, a, a close friend of mine recently, where it was kind of a scary situation, she had a, a malfunction of this same uh, same exact uh, description, but of course she she chose to cut away and dump her reserve with a pilot shoot and tow. It's up to you. There's a lot of differing opinion and I'm not going to take a stand on that, but what she chose to do was cut away. So here she is with her main risers released with her main parachute still inside the container because it had no way to go because the pin was locked closed against the bridle, through the bridle. Well, so here she is with her reserve and she looks up into the reserve and sure enough the bridle is going up to the parachute and the hacky sack on her main pilot chute is snagged in a cascade in one of her lines on her reserve. And so immediately she's thinking, this is scary, right? I mean, I could actually now have my main leave. I don't know why it's locked up. Right? It had never happened to her before, so her main could leave and then tug back uh, on one of her lines on her reserve, causing catastrophic failure of, of the reserve parachute, which is, which is quite terrifying because at this point, you're all out of parachutes, right? And so I started thinking, you know, I, I was resistant to change with this too. I, I thought, well, you know, I've been jumping for a while, you know, now 27 years, and uh, I haven't had this problem. I haven't seen it that much. Well, now I can't say that the second part of it as much because I've seen it more and more and more. And I thought, okay, well, it's not going to happen to me. I understand the problem. It's, it's the proximity of the pin to the bridle. So I need to change that. You know, I need to hide the pin under the bridle or something like that. And that should do it. I don't need to change. And I even had some people ask me, you know, Brian, you jump a UPT vector you know that they changed the closing sequence. I said, yeah, 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 but I know, but I know the source of the problem. I don't need to change. Well, it didn't happen to me, but I got wise for a change, and I said, you know, maybe I should just go ahead and change it. Uh, and I realized in that moment, realized that the reason why I didn't change was fear. I was afraid to do something different because I was afraid that I might get something worse than what I was already getting. What I had was working, right? Why should I change what is working? As we say back in Vermont, right? if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's true up to a point, but if we don't reanalyze, if we don't take a closer look at what we're doing, we may discover that actually we're doing something uh, a little bit dangerous. So I did change. I changed the sequence, and I'll show you in a second how uh, I now close, if you're not familiar with this. And I haven't had a problem. It hasn't caused any changes to the way the, my parachute deploys. It hasn't slowed down my packing in any way. And I thought, you know, it's true that we could make changes to the bridle, to the, to the thread count, the denier, if you will, of the bridle material, so that it's less likely to allow that pin to poke through. Some of the manufacturers, like Aerodyne, have already done that. Kudos, that's great. But we're not going to be able to, to modify every rig in the world. So the reason why I'm making this short video is to show you and maybe uh, sort of make this compelling argument, it's not going to hurt anything to make the change, so why are you resisting the change when you know that it's going to reduce your risks? A pilot shoot and tow is not often a fatal malfunction, but it, you know it can be, so why do something that you know is dangerous? So try it out, you know, if you don't like it, fine, it's your choice, uh, you're, the, you're the pilot of your system, however, 
it makes sense to me. So uh, let's take a closer look at what we're talking about here. Okay, let's take a closer look at the way that most rigs are closed. And of course, let's uh, double check that my pilot sheet will come out by the bridle. Hey, look at that. Yeah. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at my other video uh, about pilot sheet packing, the secret to pilot sheet packing. Well, when the rig is closed, typically you'll see the bridle comes down from the top and then tucks in. And I know uh, it's not all that easy to see here, but basically this new method allows you to make the bridle so distant from the pin that there's just no way to have that bridle hang up on the pin. So um, basically what it means is your bridle now comes out the bottom right and in the closure sequence it doesn't change much. The only thing it changes is people say, well, I have this nifty Velcro, you know, and I, I gotta get this Velcro stuck on the rig because if I don't have the Velcro on there, I, well, uh, I don't really know what the Velcro is for, but it scares me to change it. Well, it turns out that <laughs> as long as you uh, <clears throat> close it this way, you won't have a problem, even though you're not using the Velcro. If you come out the bottom right on any rig, and I've tested it on pretty much every rig, and obviously it's always a good idea to check with the manufacturer uh, of your harness container system if you're going to do something other than what the, the, their uh, normal closure sequence is. However, just because we used to do something a certain way doesn't mean that we're going to continue to do it. Right? I used to have my reserve parachute on my belly. <laughs> right, so things change. And this is one of those things. Don't you know, continue to be afraid of change. We invite danger through ignorance, closed-mindedness. Right? That's that's the consequence of fear. It's people not thinking with their heads. So it's not that complicated, was it? It didn't take me any longer. I just went out the bottom right. I went to the pin. I tuck everything in, and it doesn't even have to be that pretty. We know that the first load strike will be on the bridle that goes straight to the pin, right? So there's not any risk of hang up here. And then you tuck the bridle in and you pack your pilot chute. <laughs> it's, it's not that complicated. It's, you know, and so if you're, you're one of the thousands of people who continue to do it the old way, I'm hoping that you'll get a chance to watch this video and say, all right, you know, I'll try it. And if it if it causes a malfunction where I uh, I need a you know to use my reserve fine I can always go back to the old way, uh, but what does it really cost you to keep doing things the old way without processing without reanalyzing what is the right thing to do you know so that's too high a price. Try it. Give this a chance. It makes a lot of sense. So I'm Brian Germain and thank you for joining. To make your bed every morning, every morning, every morning, you got to make your bed every morning, even though you mess it up every night. You got to brush your teeth every single day, every single day, every single day, you got to brush your teeth every single day, even if it's just before your next bite. We've got to live every moment, give every moment Do our best to enjoy every moment Don't live for tomorrow, the past we cannot borrow We live for today Yeah. If you always rush to be somewhere else rush. To be somewhere else, rush. to be somewhere else If you always rush. rush to be somewhere else Even though happiness can be right here You'll never live every moment, give every moment Do your best to enjoy every moment Don't live for tomorrow, the past we cannot borrow We live for today The ice cream tastes so cold, sweet and yummy cold. Sweet and yummy, cold. 
sweet and yummy. The ice cream tastes so cold, sweet and yummy. Even though soon it will be all gone. We've got to live every moment, give every moment. Do our best to enjoy every moment. Don't live for tomorrow. The 